Hello and welcome to Bloomberg Quint. Today we have with us Finance Secretary Ajay Bhushan Pandey. Hello, sir. Thank you for joining us. Let me begin by asking you this question. Uh, how confident are we in meeting our uh, tax revenue targets for FY21? We are seeing a deficit of around uh, 5 lakh crore in FY21. Uh, do we expect an upside to this number? You, know, you see, uh, in the current year, in the current year, uh, uh, if you see our uh, direct tax collection, because uh, what initially, uh, what was being anticipated, is that because of pandemic, because of the lockdown, the business had suffered, uh, you know, the huge downside on the turnover side. And whenever a downside in turnover happens or the business activity happens, the direct tax gets impacted much more because, uh, you know, the uh, your profit, uh, because of uh, uh, lower turnover or the lower business activity, the company uh, may not only get the... Uh, uh, a uh, proportionate uh, decrease in the turnover, instead of a proportionate decrease in the turnover, the company may get into a loss. And therefore, what was being anticipated in the direct tax will be hit more than the indirect tax. However, uh, you know, the figure till the January in this year, what it shows is that the direct tax gross collection is down only by about 6.8%. And uh, and in this year, we have, uh, we, uh, uh, in order to help the taxpayers, uh, uh, the refunds have been at a much higher level than as compared to the uh, you know earlier years. So the refund is almost about 8% more than what the refund we gave the last year. And that is our net tax collection growth is about minus 9%. We hope that during the next two months, uh, this gap will further shrink. Now, so far, the indirect tax is concerned. Indirect tax uh, on the excise front, you know, we have shown, uh, you know, the good revenue. On the GST front also, uh, you know, the, during the last four months, uh, consistently we have uh, uh, collected more than 1 lakh crore every month. In the month of December, we collected 1 lakh 15,000 crore, which itself was a record. And that, that record also was surpassed, you know, this month, uh, in the month of January, by uh, showing a collection of 1,20,000 crores. On a custom side, the custom revenue also in the month of December was more than 16,000 crores, which, you know, used to be used to hover, hover around something like, you know, eight to 9,000 crores. Now, in the month of January, also the custom has, custom revenue has, in, uh, has gone beyond 16,000 crores. So the revenue side, you know, we are seeing the further, uh, uh, you know, a trend there. So considering these, the estimates that we have given on the uh, the tax side, you know, the, the, those are quite realistic. And on the basis of that itself, what we have shown is the uh, uh, the fiscal deficit of 9.5% is the realistic one. Uh, we have seen a comment from Moody's uh, Investor Services, which has expressed some doubt over meeting the uh, tax revenue target in the next year. Uh, is Is a... 16% growth feasible uh, when it comes to tax collection next year? See, uh, if you see the 16% growth, uh, uh, what we uh, what we uh, estimate is that the nom nominal growth rate will be between the 14 to 15%. Now, if the nominal growth is in the range of 15% and we have added a tax buoyancy of 1.15%, so we are estimated somewhere around 167 16.8% growth, which is quite realistic. Uh, and we hope that you know we'll be able to achieve this. Uh, uh, when it uh, when you talk about the pre-pandemic year, this uh, tax target for next year is actually ten percent higher than that. When the growth is looking muted compared to what it was in the pre-pandemic, so how, what what gives you this hope of achieving a higher target? No, uh, in the sense that if you see the uh, you know take the example of uh, GST itself, in this pandemic year itself. If you know, if uh, you know, by improving the tax administration, by improving a compliance, because in case of a GST, of course, the higher collection is coming because of the uh, you know economic sharp economic recovery. But in addition to that, our tax administration and then the compliance has improved. We are using data analytics. We are able to take targeted action against those who are who are uh, evading taxes. And because of that, you know, if we are able to improve our tax collection during the last few months, 
uh, you know, we hope, uh, we expect that, you know, the same trend would continue for the next year as well. Similarly, on the direct tax, as I, as I was mentioning, that direct tax, our gross tax collection is down only by 6.8% in this pandemic year. Now, so the naturally, in the next year, the situation is going to improve. Plus, a lot of public spending is, is happening uh, you know, in, the, in the next year. The, the capital expenditure will be to the tune of 5,54,000 crores. So all this public spending is ultimately will you know, get a spent. And that itself will create an economic activity. And that should get reflected in the higher, higher taxes. The non-tax revenue is largely reliant on uh, LIC. So how far have you moved in terms of that process? Right see, see, the non-tax revenue is for the dis disinvestment. And there, you know, we have we are estimating that next year we should be able to get 1,75,000. Now, there are certain disinvestments which are in the, already in the pipeline. We are under the process of the various st stages of bidding. You know, they will they should get finalized. Plus, we will try to, you know, add some more and we hope that this 75,000 we should be able to recover. By when do you expect the LIC IPO to happen? The, I mean, this is something, you know, which, you know, the, uh, you know, the procedures are being uh, worked out and we should be able to come out as soon as possible. But another aspect of the non-tax revenue is the dividend that you receive. Uh, so how much are you expecting as dividend from the RBI the next year? See, the total uh, non-tax revenue that estimate that we have given out of that 1,75,000 is the uh, from the disinvestment. Remaining are the dividend. Now the dividends are coming from the public sector units and plus the RBI. So we have made a fairly good estimate and the individual breakups I don't have. But then, you know, we are quite hopeful that we should be able to get that, uh, you know, the non-disinvestment, uh, non-tax revenue as well. The FM said in the press conference today that we are spending, spending and spending and that's the motto we have followed. In FI21, uh, what we saw, what our team saw is a large part of the spending that happened during the later part of the year was towards uh, clearing the subsidy areas and bringing the dues of FCI on budget versus off budget. Is it true or? No, see, uh, our attempt has been uh, uh, that, uh, you know, all subsidies, you know, in the last budget, what we actually showed that whatever was the off budget, we presented that at the time of the budget itself. Now, in this budget, you know, there is nothing uh, like you know, any off budget. Every uh, every borrowing is on the account is is on the uh, is directly on the uh, on the budget itself. The government did not tinker with the income tax slabs at all. So, uh, what was the think thinking behind the budget being process? Did you even think about it? Was it on table? Or did so? Did I think constraints? I think we need to get uh, you know get out of the mindset uh, about tinkering with the tax structure or the tax rate every every year, because uh, uh, because you know for the good of the economy uh, there has to be a stability of rates, and uh, therefore this budgetary exercise should not be uh, always be considered as a time for, you know, tinkering with this rate, you know, either way, either increase the rate or decrease the rate. So rather what we should focus on the stability of the rates and also simplifying the structure, uh, the tax system, improving compliance. So this budget should be an occasion to uh, do other things, uh, things other than the, than the tax rates. So I think uh, because uh, if you, uh, if, if you remember, uh, in 2019-20, off budget, outside budget, you know, we slashed corporate tax rates. And co having brought down the co corporate tax rate to 22% and 15% for the new manufacturing company, you know, uh, you know, we need to provide the stability of the uh, rates. Similarly, on the personal income tax, last year, we introduced an alternate system where we had a significantly lower uh, tax rates. So I think you know we need to provide the stability of the tax rates, and we should uh, we should focus on improving compliance, simplification, and uh, and then uh, increasing our collection efficiency, and in and uh, improving our collection not only by increasing or decreasing the tax rates. So do you mean to say that the personal tax rates and the corporate tax rates would remain stable for some years going ahead? 
No, I mean, I'm, I, what I'm trying to say is that the tax rate has to be stable. Uh, when it comes to your uh, revenue estimates from telecom, you have pegged it at around 53,986 crore in the next fiscal at a time when the government is expecting sale of spectrum. So why is it uh, kept at a very low uh, level? I think, you know, all these estimates have been worked, worked out after a detailed study by the uh, respective departments. And in this particular case, the telecom department must have gone through <coughs> their entire plan of action, that what exactly are they going to do? And on that basis, they have given that estimate. The last question, uh, you said in the press conference that the, uh, the new says for agriculture, infrastructure and development will not have an impact on consumers. Can you elaborate? How will it not impact? See, this agriculture, infrastructure and development says the prime purpose of this new CES is to earmark a special fund for improving the agriculture infrastructure. Uh, because that's very important because we want to help farmers uh, so that and the farmers should, uh, uh, you know, the infrastructure, the development uh, should take place in that sector so that the farmer gets, uh, uh, first of all, their uh, uh, productivity increases. Whatever they produce, they should get the remunerative prices. And for that purpose, for improving infrastructure, this CES has been created. The CES will enable us to earmark funds, which can be used only for that purpose. The CES has been imposed only on a very, very limited number of items, somewhere around about 15 items. And 15 items, the CES is not an additional burden. In most cases, Without you know increasing uh, any additional burden or putting any additional burden, this test has been imposed by reducing the other details. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.